Apocalypse to me is exactly what it says. It's the amalgamation of development and operations. Traditionally, we've seen developers, you know, they're happy to finish their code, throw it over the wall and give it to operations. Operations have no idea of uh, how these applications are meant to run, you know, what the infrastructure requirements are. So DevOps is bringing the two closer together, allowing them to work together so that operations have a heads up on what development are doing. Development can talk to operations and tell them what they need. But it's, it's also bringing left shifting the responsibilities really, getting, getting the infrastructure needs in as early as possible as part of the software delivery lifecycle. So in terms of writing out infrastructure as code, something that operations can do, it can go into the same repository as the application that the developers are also committing their code into. So it's really bringing the two teams together in order to effectively get features out the door into production so that the customer can use them. And I think that's what the DevOps movement has really been about, is that better communication and working together stronger in order to effectively deliver features at the end of the day. We looked at implementing a few quick wins. Um, we removed deploying from developers' machines. Um, we removed building from developers' machines and we implemented TeamCity as a continuous integration server. Um, we also brought in Octopus Deploy as a uh, deployment and release management software. So releases started to go through a pipeline out into AWS. But it made us look at how we were utilizing AWS and, and we weren't making use of infrastructure as a service. They were effectively treating it as a hosting center. They were tin as far as they were concerned. So the various things that we couldn't do, um, we could only scale up. We couldn't scale out. Um, and the nature of the business was very seasonal. They're, they're selling holidays and, and bookings and they have a Christmas period where they're extremely busy, so traffic ramps up. Yet there was no provision to be able to accommodate that in a smart way. So we then started looking at how do we start to make use of um, infrastructure as a service? We looked at Terraform and we started to provision servers using Terraform in AWS, which meant that we could treat them as cattle um, and when we're not happy with them, we can replace them when they're unhealthy. But it also gave us added benefits of we can scale out. So we've given AWS a blueprint of this is how you deploy a server and a version of our, of our software. And if you need to scale out based on some metrics that we give you, you can scale out and you can handle that load no problem. And obviously, as soon as that traffic dies away, you can scale back in. So it was very efficient use of, of AWS services of a cloud provider. We then moved towards now, how can we reduce our downtime? Um, so when we deploy, we want to be smart about deploying. We don't want downtime, basically. Um, that could be a booking loss. That could be revenue, revenue lost. So we implemented a true blue-green deployment scenario where as we have a new version being provisioned in AWS, again, all through Terraform, um, we're waiting for it to go healthy. So the load balancers are doing health checks on there. And then when they're healthy, AWS will slowly trickle the connections over to the new version and effectively our previous version is no longer needed so we can just wipe it and destroy it. Now that kind of just became a catalyst for, oh, we can improve, we can get better, we can have more change, um, to the point where we now do code reviews um, and we automate those code reviews. Um, we use code analysis tools which automatically rate each of the um, pull requests that are done on feature branches. So we've got a lot of automation in there. It's taken a year um, to get where we are, but we've managed to move ourselves up the food chain. So we're now around a two and a half. The next big push for us is really getting the testing up, um, which is obviously one of, the, one of the things that needs to be done to make sure that we don't regress features. But in the course of 365 days, we've gone from a minus one where everything was manual all the way up to two and a half, where pretty much our infrastructure, our deployments um, are repeatable and automated.